This is Abnormal Psychology from the Abnormal Psychology textbook, 7th edition, written by David H. Barlow V. Mark Duran. This is my summary of the Sci-337 course from Macquarie University. Chapter 1, Abnormal Behaviors in Historical Contexts. So this is basically the first part of the first chapter. Part 1, What is Abnormal Psychology? So in this video, I would define firstly the key terms in abnormal psychology as stated by in chapter one of this book known as abnormal behavior in historical contexts. The second video, I will review the history, the actual nitty gritty of abnormal behaviors in historical contexts. So I'll cover the historical aspect in the second video of abnormal psychology. So this is basically the first part of the first chapter and the next video will be the second part of the first chapter. Psychological disorders are defined as psychological dysfunctions within an individual associated with distress, impairment in functioning and response. Basically, an individual is unable to go about in their daily functioning as a result of this mental impairment. A phobia is defined as a disorder marked by persistent fear of object or situation. Psychological dysfunction is a breakdown in cognitive, emotional or behavioral dysfunction. Impairment is when an individual is unable to meet their needs. Atypical or not culturally expected is when a certain behavior occurs infrequently and this deviates from the average. Prototype. Patients have some symptoms of disorders and thus the individual patient needs to meet a minimum number in order to be classified, in order to be diagnosed with a certain disorder. Psychopathology is defined as the scientific study of psychological disorders. People who dwell in the realm of psychopathology are known as clinical and counseling psychologists. They have a PhD degree, whereby psychologists study for five years and are in a graduate level. This prepares them to conduct and research into causes, diagnoses, and treatments of disorders. A psychiatrist has a medical degree and specializes in psychiatry, which uh, requires three to four years residence training. They can give drugs and other biological treatments. Psychiatric social work involves the mastery of the degree in social work, develop expertise in social or family situations, and they can then treat family problems. A psychiatric nurse has a master or PhD that specializes in the care or treatment of patients with a psychological disorder. Other than psychiatrists and clinical or counseling psychologists, there are also marriage and family therapists, as well as mental health counselors. They require one to two years of earning a master's degree in order to provide clinical services under PhD supervision. All individuals who work in the psychological profession must abide by the scientist practitioner model in which mental health professionals take a scientific approach to their clinical work and they keep up with the latest scientific developments, diagnoses and treatments that allow for the practitioners to improve the condition of their patients. Also, mental health professionals evaluate the effectiveness and might conduct research of their own volition. Mental health professionals present problems in which presents is a shorthand way of indicating why a person came to the clinic. The reason as to what is causing their symptoms. A clinical description is a unique combination of behaviors, thoughts and feelings that make up the disorder. Clinical is defined as the types of problems, disorders one would find in a clinic or hospital. And this is connected to assessment and treatment. Prevalence, uh, when individuals require understanding of statistics and the effect of 
the issue in the population in general. The incidence is how many new cases occur in a certain period. For example, whether this certain disorder occurs for a year. Or how many times it occurs in a year. A course is defined as individual patterns of disorders. Chronic courses are disorders that last over a long time or could even last over an entire lifespan. Episodic courses, on the other hand, are when individuals are likely to recover within a few months and then reoccurrence of this disorder occurs. Time limited course, when a disorder will improve without treatment in a relatively short period of time. Acute disorders are disorders that begin suddenly. Insidious onset is defined as when disorders begin gradually over extended time periods. Prognosis is given out by the clinician whereby they anticipate a course of disorder. If the prognosis is good, then the individual is likely to recover. If the prognosis is guarded, this is probably indicative of a bad outcome. Thanks for watching. So in this video, I would define firstly the key terms in abnormal psychology, as stated by in chapter one of this book, known as Abnormal Behavior in Historical Contexts. The second video, I will review the history, the actual nitty gritty of abnormal behaviors in historical contexts. So I'll cover the historical aspect in the second video of abnormal psychology. So this is basically the first part of the first chapter, and the next video will be the second part of the first chapter.